Hello, I'm Mr. Sinolit, aka Wen Shui Shen Sheng. Imagine you're getting your hair cut like one of the people here on my right. You're sitting uh, with the barber. He's trimming the front of your hair as it was very important for you to do in Qing Dynasty China, the last imperial dynasty of China running from 1600s all the way up to the Republic, the early 1900s. You are just one, one regular Joe getting your hair cut and you hear from the barber as he's trimming the front of your hair off, making it smooth as you had to do, only keeping the crown with hair, much like the man you can see just behind you on your left. He's got nothing on the front and his hair is kept at the back to grow that pigtail that you are required to have by law under punishment of death during the Qing dynasty. And your barber tells you of the next town over where they hear of people's pigtails being cut right off from them during their sleep or when they're otherwise unavailable, perhaps drunk or unaware, and being used in sorcery rituals. And the people who that happens to end up dying horrible deaths. Imagine you hear these stories. The year is 1768, and this is the Chinese soul-stealing sorcery scare, the subject of our book by Philip Kuhn, The Soul Stealers. The backdrop to the sorcery scare goes way back to the 1600s, when the Manzu people, the peoples of the northeastern area around modern-day Heilongjiang in China, were invited in to help deal with a rebel problem to Beijing by the Ming Dynasty leaders and ended up staying. Just as so often happens, the people invited in to help with the problem actually are the ones who stick around. They refused to leave Beijing and took over the whole of China. These are the modern day Manzu people, an ethnic minority in China consisted of around 10 million people. Now that's in modern day China. Back in the early uh, 1600s, this minority may have been even fewer. So the Manzu were a horse peoples, having more in common with the, you know, the Mongolians or the uh, Tibetans in terms of their culture. They were Buddhists without much of the mixture of Taoism and Confucianism that was existing in China at the time. Now they considered themselves a separate ethnic group. They had different habits and life lifestyles. They were mostly, uh, they lived nomadic lives beyond the wall, beyond the Great Wall in the Northeast. And in the gradual process of taking over China, only garrisoned small numbers of actual Manzu people in important locations and took over the bureaucracy just at its top level, never marrying into Chinese, very rarely marrying into Chinese society, even up to the times of Puyi, the last emperor, were still marrying people who, could, who considered themselves as ethnic Manzu. So these were much akin to the way in which the Normans took over the UK um, uh, back in the early Middle Ages, the 1000s, 1066, the Norman Conquest, they were a tiny minority ruling over a large majority. So they had a problem with how to deal with a potentially rebellious population. So what they did was something quite clever. Now, the Manzu had a habit, a custom, of growing the pigtail, that what we talked about earlier very long at the back, shaved off at the front. Uh, in their culture, it meant something like virility or strength, the, uh, as opposed to the Han population who did not wear their hair like this. They would grow their hair long, tie it up perhaps, or if not at all, as a monk, shaving it off. So what they did was something smart. They said, hey, Everyone, you have to show now your loyalty 
to the Manzu leaders by cutting your hair in this way. And if you do not, that shows that you are an enemy. And in fact, that was one of the main rallying cries around early rebellions to the Manzu rulers who were taking over China step by step from the Ming was by cutting off the pigtail and saying, no, 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 we are Chinese. We refuse to be subservient to our uh, uh, ethnic rulers. And we will grow our, hair as long, grow our hair long and as we like. It's one of the signs that people use, generals use, to put down enemies uh, in the subsequent years and make sure people stayed loyal. So it was a sign of loyalty to the dynasty. It was punishable by death. So if you were this man on the right here, it's very important to keep your pigtail all cute. 